welcome to Tech Talk. Me and Thea will co-host for me, Kenton Milroy. Okay, welcome back to another Tech Talk episode. I'm having one special edition for Asia Pacific Regional Internet Governance Forum 2018 where we have Iriri Island Resort, one beautiful place. And uh, uh, plantation session have been uh, run throughout the day one, day two about internet. And uh, this episode, uh, you may be fortunate enough to look at one very prominent figure of internet, uh, uh, the old internet organization, and uh, I mean Dr. Finton Cray, chef, and I mean, I mean one American internet pioneer, where he I mean, recognized globally as the father of internet. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Finton, here. to have you on the, on the show. Thank you. So tell us about yourself and how the internet came about and how it bring transformation to the... Okay, yeah. so how many hours do we have? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me try to make it very brief. Mm. Um, it's true, I am one of the co-inventors of the internet. My mm. partner Robert Kahn and I did the design in 1973. Okay. We did this work for the Defense Department. Um, but it soon became uh, of academic interest because mm. our other research agencies like the Department of Energy and uh, the uh, National Science Foundation yeah. uh, and uh, NASA were all very interested in using computer networks mm. for communication. Mm. So the system grew uh, during the 1970s and the early 1980s. Mm. Then Tim Berners-Lee came along and did the World Wide Web uh, in the, around 1991. Yeah. Commercialization in the United States happened in 1989. Mm. So we had um, a substantial um, amount of energy behind the Internet's expansion. Mm. And in particular, the National Science Foundation in the U.S. is paying for international connections to other research networks mm. in other parts of the world. So during especially the 1980s, mid to late 1980s and 1990s, we saw an increasing number of academic and commercial networks mm. Uh, arising and connecting to yeah. this internet system. So now we have hundreds of thousands of networks mm. that are all interconnected mm. and they offer internet service to the general public mm. as well as to the academic world. Mm. So internet uh, uh, protocol, yeah, only what you call them TCP IP, I have now one little co-founder plan with them uh, partner up uh, one co create a plan, we call them a uh, can. And uh, internet has now come to our shores. If it were not for the internet, we would not have been connected to the world. And the playing field for doing business would not have been busy, uh, would not have been easy for Vanuatu. Uh, we are now looking into, we are now connected to our first cable, uh, and then we are building the second cable up to the Solomons. Uh, when it comes to internet, uh, it transforms many things. Uh, what, what do you, did you think about this transformation when you are inventing, I mean, it's a mind-boggling platform. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, first of all, when we started, it was pretty small. I mean, okay. There were just three networks. Now, of course, as I say, hundreds of thousands. Mm. But we planned for a global operation. Okay. We designed it to expand because we were designing it for the American Defense Department to use for command and control communications. Okay. And it's just uh, interesting and ironic that the academic community also adopted this technology mm. and it began to spread for them and then it became commercialized. Mm. The Defense Department still gets to use it, but so does the rest of the world. Well, mm. half of the rest of the world. So we have about 50% of the world's population online. Mm. They're scattered all over the world. But in many countries, you'll find uh, either you know, small or very large spots of mm. disconnected from the internet. So uh, I'm now at Google as their chief internet evangelist and my job is to get more internet built all around the world mm. wherever I can encourage mm. the investment to be made. Mm. So although we didn't imagine everything that's happened mm. in the internet, we had this huge appetite for easy connectivity between computer devices or programmable devices. Mm. And now here it is, 2018, what we are anticipating is literally billions of devices that mm. we call the Internet of Things, which yeah. is appliances that you might find IoT, around the house. Yeah. So uh, we intended for this to scale up, mm. and we're pretty happy that over the last 40 years or so, the system has grown by a factor of about 10 million in mm. every dimension you can think of. Mm. Speed, number of devices, number of users, and everything else. Mm. 
you, you are now working with uh, Google to uh, bring this uh, more harmonious internet connectivity uh, and also being an evangelist. Uh, in Vanuatu, uh, YouTube is, is uh, a popular internet uh, application, application. Yes, and also I am on Gmail, uh, I've got Gmail, lots of uh, Nivans got Gmail I want to Google applications because you know Google Drive and all these applications. Oh, I'm delighted to hear that. Yeah, yeah. and uh, oh, what are some threats? Uh, oh, the, the advantage is huge. It's free. It's giving us uh, m m economical benefits. Uh, what do you think we should be aware of uh, uh, from an ethical ethical perspective when using all these right. applications online? So one thing that we can all recognize is that this is a kind of neutral platform and people can use it for all kinds of things, including some not so good things. And so people say bad things on the net, they show yeah. the videos that they would probably wish they wouldn't. Mm. Uh, so uh, there's malware going around on the net yeah. programs that try to hack into your computer and take, take your mm. identity or take away your bank account. Yeah. So we have uh, harmful behavior in mm. this online environment. And we have to be very conscious of that, and we have to do something about it. Mm. So there are technical things that we can do to inhibit some of the bad behaviors. Mm. We have to agree on a global scale or internationally that certain behaviors are unacceptable. And if we catch people you know, doing them, yeah. there will be consequences. Mm. But we have to do this on an international basis because okay. the, the harmful person could be in one country and the victim yeah. in another. And finally, I think we can say socially that this is just wrong. Don't do that. It's bad. Yeah. And even though that sounds weak, um, it's, it's, it has the potential for social pressure. Mm. If a whole community says, this is unacceptable behavior, we don't want it in our mm. community, that's a certain amount of social pressure that can inhibit some mm. of the behavior as well. So we have to accept that the network is being used for wonderful and incredibly constructive things, creating new jobs yeah. and businesses, creating new income, yeah. new education, access to information you never had before. Mm. And at the same time, it has these other problems. Mm. So we have to work hard to uh, deal with the problems so that we can take advantage of all the constructive aspects of this system. Mm. Uh, on Internet in Vanuatu, is now on the rise. Uh, we've got, uh, uh, since the government rolls out this universal access policy funded by World Bank, we are now achieving this 98 penetration of mobile coverage wow, across the country. That's fabulous. So the internet will, be, will soon be in the hands of the entire citizens. Uh, the government has launched uh, just custodial uh, child online protection policy, uh, the cybercrime legislation. Uh, Act mm -hmm. and also the government is looking into data protection policy. Yes, uh, it tries to attract data center business into Vanuatu. We know the electricity ex is expensive, yes. but we, if you look geographically, we are stationed right in the middle of the Pacific. We've got the Pacific Islanders here, uh, Pacific Islands here, and then we've got New Zealand and New Caledonia right. down south, PNG up north, Asia, and then Australia. So we are surrounded. We are trying to station and market ourselves as a data center hub, but we, it's it's still on the horizon. So, so one of the, Google, as you know, has a number of data centers, and one of the things that we look for is first of all where to put one that will do the most good mm. uh, in the area that it can reach. Mm. So that typically, in the case of Vanuatu, of course, we need to reach more than two hundred and fifty thousand people yeah. to justify yeah. putting a data center in. We do need a lot of power. And we need the ability to cool the system down. I mean, that, you know, we use a lot of power yeah. and then it heats up. Mm. So uh, there's power and communications that mm. are needed. We need skilled people to operate the data centers. Mm. Uh, so I think uh, our decisions, we we're constantly looking at where we need to put additional okay. capacity. And I've been told we do have some caching capability here. Yeah. For example, in order to make it easier to get to YouTube videos once mm -hmm. they're downloaded yeah. and they're locally served. Yes. And Akamai has done the same thing. Um, one thing I would suggest to you, though, is that quite independent of whether a data center shows up, let's think a little bit about what kinds of education we need to provide mm -hmm. to uh, the uh, sure. Vanuatu citizens to make them valuable to other com companies outside of Vanuatu. Mm -hmm. Because what you want is to take advantage of a global economy and attract business, even if it's done remotely. 
Yeah. So you don't necessarily have to have a business setting up physical mm -hmm. facilities here. Uh, you can still generate income for mm -hmm. the people who are here in Vanuatu if they are serving needs mm -hmm. outside of the country. Mm -hmm. So there's an opportunity here to take advantage of a very smart move by the mm -hmm. government mm -hmm. to establish a universal service policy yeah. and to assure that everyone can have access mm -hmm. to this uh, underlying system. Time limit is short. You may realize I have to talk one hour, two hour, three hour. But uh, time limit allow me to make a busy schedule. Lo uh, APR IGF. Uh, I meet with several people back and. But uh, Dr. Fincher, we've got youths who are now embracing internet. They will be doing all sorts of things. Some are into uh, promoting their stuff on handicrafts, on for tourism, for tourists on the internet. Some will be creating personal blogs, some will be creating video cast and uh, uh, all this what they call webcast and audio cast or whatever name it is, uh, going on the internet. Everyone wants to be in, on the internet. Uh, what are some thought-provoking advice you would like to give it to our audience in Vanuatu? Well, I have several pieces of advice. The first one is there is still a lot of work to be done to make the internet accessible everywhere and mm. safe to use. So there is that's the work that we need to do. Some, some of your citizens could do that. Mm. Second, uh, it is an enormous engine for sharing of information. And so one thing we need to work on is how to assess the quality of the information that gets, uh, finds its way onto the internet. And since we can't write algorithms to guarantee the quality of information, mm. we also have to teach the users to use their heads and think about where did this information come from and you know, is there any corroborating yeah. evidence yeah. Yes. for it? Was there some motivation to put it on there to convince me that I should think this way instead yeah. of that way? That's called critical thinking mm. and it is a skill that we should all learn how to adopt. Mm. Yes. I mean, I'm going to discuss with Dr. Fincef and you have a call Wikipedia and I read about uh, Dr. Fincef and also go to YouTube to watch more uh, videos. Plan. Me spending full of time to watch more videos. Yeah, very cool. Something on the internet about one them work with Mr. Megan or one them something I'm starting about the future of the internet. Uh, Dr. Fincef, it's good to have you on the show. It's a pleasure. Uh, we are very happy to have you on the show and it's good for our uh, audience on TV. Well, Thank I you. hope I have a chance to come back and see you again. Thank you very much. Good